Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Euro MPI USA uh, 2020. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I am Wesley Bland, uh, the general chair this year. Uh, turned out to be a very odd year, as we all know, uh, but we're happy that we can still uh, get together virtually and and um, have this conference and uh, share the um, the tech program that we have put together. Um, we think it should have a lot of good information and, and we're, we have some good papers and posters to present this year, uh, along with tutorials and workshops. Um, so welcome virtually to Austin. Unfortunately, uh, unlike some of the promises I made at last year's conferences or last year's conference, I cannot provide tacos, barbecue, food trucks, or any of the other things that you would normally be getting with an Austin experience. Uh, but of course, what we can provide is is the if we can still provide all of the tech content of the the conference and and we'll do so over these uh, next three days. Uh, we have um, eight papers, four posters. Uh, we have a uh, a micro tutorial on partition communication. There's a workshop on Thursday, and then uh, as many of you have already discovered, we have an online community we've set up uh, for the life of this conference. Um, on Slack, uh, that will be where uh, most of the um, kind of side channel discussions uh, happen during the conference. Um, while we can use the com or, or the chat feature of uh, WebEx, it wouldn't be my recommendation, uh, just because uh, Slack tends to be better for these sorts of things, and will last uh, beyond a single session. So that will be good. Um, so for today's program, um, obviously I'll uh, I'll begin things uh, just kind of going over some of the logistics of how the the conference will work. Um, we have a, a keynote coming up from Martin Schultz, and then two paper sessions. Um, we've obviously compressed the schedule more this year than we would normally do for an in-person conference. Uh, this is to uh, to help out people in uh, both or kind of all extremes of the time zones. Um, and uh, and to uh, reduce the the long hours we have to spend uh, sitting in front of a WebEx call, uh, but this should still give us the the time uh, to be able to uh, to hear these talks and to ask questions of the speakers and and to be able to interact uh, and um, cut out some of the uh, some of the things that work better for an in person conference anyway. Um, so obviously this doesn't include time for. Um, for breaks, uh, what we'll do um, is uh, obviously, of course, you're welcome to step away anytime you need, but uh, we will also um, take breaks anytime we're running ahead. So if we are finishing a session a little bit early, we'll take a break until the beginning of the next session uh, to allow um, to allow anyone that would be joining for that that next session to uh, to come in at the correct time. We don't want anyone to miss a, a, a talk uh, because they were expecting it to start at a, a different time. Um, so this is uh, today's schedule. Tomorrow we will have uh, some more paper sessions. Um, we'll have a poster session um, toward the middle of the time, and then we'll have a, uh, a micro tutorial um, just before the closing remarks. Um, Unfortunately, we had um, some last minute uh, emergencies that um, meant we couldn't have the micro tutorial that we were expecting to have yesterday, uh, but we will still have uh, have one of those sessions tomorrow um, at the end of the time. And then on Thursday, we will have the, uh, the E4S workshop uh, and that will happen um, on BlueJeans as opposed to, uh, to WebEx. You can find all of the um, you will receive all the registration information and the uh, the link for the Blue Jeans call if you register for that session um, on the website. And as always, if you have any questions about any of these things, uh, just reach out over Slack or um, or to me via email, and I'd be happy to help out. So before we get too far into um, to the conference, I do want to say a, a big thank you to the team that has been uh, helping put all of this together uh, all year. Uh, I feel like we've we've planned two conferences at this point. We we had, we're most of the way down the road of planning an in-person conference, and then obviously had to shift to this. and uh, And these folks have been a huge help um, 
along that path. Uh, and a, a special thanks to to Kent from TAC who helped put together a lot of plans for an in-person conference that ha that never happened. Uh, but all the same, it, it was still very helpful. Um, and to all of the the people that helped put together the uh, the content that you'll be seeing over the next couple of days, uh, a very big thank you to them. Uh, so this is the uh, the leadership team, and then we also have the uh, the team that helped uh, review the content, review the papers and the posters, uh, and thank you to to all of of you as well. So uh, I just want to say a little bit about the logistics of the conference. Obviously, uh, with this format, um, it's a little uh, different, and every conference is doing things slightly differently. Uh, so I want to make sure everyone's familiar with how uh, we'll be doing things over the next couple of days. Um, so we are using uh, WebEx events, which is slightly different from a normal WebEx meeting uh, that you might have had um, elsewhere. Uh, and we want to say thank you to Intel for uh, for providing this platform. Um, this is not something that would normally be free, and so this is uh, it's been very helpful um, for for them to provide that for us. Um, as you may have noticed already, uh, there is a separate registration required for each day of the conference. Um, each day is its own WebEx event, and unfortunately, there's no way for that to just be a recurring meeting. So if you only registered for today's session, um, you will need to go register again for tomorrow. And then if you'd like to attend the workshop on Thursday, you'll need to register for that as well. And when you do that, you'll receive an email uh, with the uh, the link for the Blue Jeans call on Thursday. But that's just how we're um, trying to prevent spam is by using the usual uh, registration system for that as well. So um, please do go register for each of those and you should get a confirmation email when you do that. For those of you who are presenting, uh, many of you have, have attended one of our uh, practice sessions already uh, just to, to do um, kind of a tech dry run. Uh, but just as a reminder, um, if you are presenting, you will be a panelist. You can see the participants list. You'll see uh, right now just myself as a panelist. Um, that means I am the only one who is unmuted. For, for everyone else, uh, unlike a normal WebEx call, you cannot unmute yourself. Um, you need to either be a panelist or have one of the panelists unmute you. Um, so if you do have a question or, or a comment or something that you would um, like to say, uh, you can just raise your hand um, or a few other ways to, to be able to get our attention. Um, and the session chairs for each session uh, will be responsible uh, generally for um, for muting and unmuting people to be able to ask those questions. Um, so there's three ways I would suggest you do that. The first is to raise your hand. Uh, because I'm the host, I couldn't take a screenshot of the raise your hand button, but it would be right here where this red box is. Um, if you are looking at your uh, your WebEx uh, app, uh, there's there should be a raise your hand button uh, right there in the attendee list. Uh, so you can click that and that will indicate that you'd like to be unmuted. Um, so that is one way. Another way is of course to send a message on Slack. Um, so I, I mentioned before, um, we, we do have a Slack instance that we've set up uh, just for this conference. So you can uh, get the attention of the session chair in there. Uh, there is a um, there is a session or th there is a channel for each session in Slack with the exception of this one. So I suppose for this one, you can just use the general channel. Um, so you can uh, can get the session chair's attention there. Or of course, uh, you can use the, the WebEx chat. Uh, I just say that one last because it, it is harder for session chairs or myself to notice um, messages that come in there. We don't get notifications or anything. Uh, from the uh, uh, from the conversational side, so that covers the um, the presentation side. From the conversational side, um, unfortunately, one of the things that we probably all value the most from an in-person conference is the ability to have those sorts of in-the-halls conversations um, that are so valuable. Um, and 
uh, with a virtual format, that's not quite as easy as it would have been before, but we do want to uh, to give that opportunity as much as possible. Um, so we do have this Slack instance set up. Uh, as I said, we have a, a channel, um, a general channel for just kind of conference-wide uh, conversations. There's an announcements channel. Um, we're going to try to keep that one to be only uh, announcing uh, sessions as they come up and any other conference-wide announcements that need to go out um, and conversations should move to another place. Uh, each session will have its own channel. Um, so as you were, as you joined the Slack, you should have been added to a number of, of channels uh, and you can see those on the bar on the left side of the window. Um, so you can have conversations with the um, the speakers or session chairs or other attendees about a particular session in those channels um, and that those will be persistent um, for some period of time after the conference um, so that, that if you have any questions afterwards, uh, you're welcome to uh, to see those or to you know, continue those conversations there. Um, and then that that will be the best place, as I said, for any uh, conversations as opposed to the WebEx chat, uh, just because it will persist beyond the end of a session. Um, please do avoid using uh, the uh, the tags that would notify the entire channel for various things. Um, that tends to uh, to not be helpful with these sorts of large groups. Um, so if you uh, if you uh, need to get people's attention, um, you you can use individual people, uh, but um, but tagging the entire group is um, not ideal. So if you haven't joined the Slack already, uh, I'm noticing a few of you joining now, and that's great. Um, the link here is on the bottom of the screen. Um, anybody with that link can join, and, uh, and we'll be happy to see you there. Um, just one more uh, thing on Slack. Um, Using threaded conversations will again be helpful as we have a large group um, and I expect that once the technical content begins, we'll have uh, a number of conversations going on there and this will help uh, keep those conversations a little bit organized. This is a very short uh, tutorial on how to use a threaded conversation in Slack. You can click the, uh, the little speech bubble there to start a conversation, it'll open a window on the right-hand side. And then if you'd like to see them, you can click on the one reply button there or however many replies there will be um, and continue the conversation in that area. Um, so one other thing I forgot to mention, um, or I forgot to make a slide for is we are recording these sessions. Uh, you, uh, you've probably seen this a few times by now um, that I, I um, added to the registration page uh, a, a little checkbox so that you would be aware that we'd be recording the sessions. Uh, we will uh, post these on YouTube after the conference is over so that those who couldn't attend at a particular time uh, can see those later uh, and still have uh, have time to watch those and perhaps um, communicate with, with any speakers that where they might have questions. So if there's something that you uh, you need to step out for or missed or just want to see again, uh, those will be posted on the um, the uh, conference YouTube channel and uh, we'll send out links to those after the conference is over uh, and post those on the website. Um, so if you uh, if that is helpful to you, then um, hopefully you can make use of that. Uh, does anyone have any questions um, about kind of logistically how the conference will will work for the next few days? Um, you can use any of those mechanisms I mentioned before to raise your hand or send a message. There's someone asking for the uh, the Slack link, and that that's right here on the the screen again. If um, if someone would like to join. All right, so I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so with that in mind, I am a little ahead and therefore I probably shouldn't go too far uh, down the keynote path. Uh, so maybe we'll take uh, just a few more minutes uh, and then we'll start um, the keynote at the bottom of the hour. <laughs> 